You're not going to want to miss this episode of the AI Show where Netta Habe takes us through some of the new things in Form Recognizer. Make sure you tune in. Hello and welcome to this episode of the AI Show. We're looking at extracting information from your documents with new capabilities in Form Recognizer. We've got a special guest with us, Netta. Netta, how are you doing, my friend? Very well. How are you? Thank you. Fantastic. So for those that don't know what Form Recognizer is, can you give them a little introduction? Yes, of course. Form Recognizer extract documents, extract information from your documents. It enables you to extract text, uh, tables, selection marks, key value pairs, um, and any information from a document in various languages. So, I mean, it's it's very useful. I've used it before, but obviously it's been a little bit of time for me. Uh, can you tell us what's new? Okay, let me show you what's new in Form Recognizer. So we're gonna start with, um, with a sample labeling tool. This is our sample labeling tool where you can get started easily. And we're gonna start with layout. Layout extracts the text, the table, the selection marks, and all the information from your documents. And in this release, we added 73 new languages including Chinese, Japanese, Korean, German, French, Portuguese. So let's see how Form Recognizer performs on these languages. So before and you go there, if, if I can ask you a question. So is is this part of the AI, this thing that you're showing right here? It, or or is, this, is this something else? Because I don't know if people, everyone has seen this before. So what is this tool you're using? Yeah, this is our sample labeling tool that enables you to get started. It's hosted in this site, the FOTT Preview and FOTT app. Um, and it's also an open source, so you can take this tool and customize it and embed it in your pro in, into your end-to-end -end solution. Um, and you can also easily get started with it to see the results on your documents. I see. So it's just a tool to help people take advantage of the AI bits. And anyone can take this and use it and put it in their own software even. That is correct. Has anyone it's also put this available in the as a container that okay. you can deploy on your own um, on your own um, on your own? or as an open source and you can take the code and embed it in your products, or you can use the sample which is hosted in this link. Do you know if anyone's actually embedded it in their product already? Yes, we have several customers who have embedded and, and created end-to-end -end solutions uh, and document understanding solutions using this tool, um, converting it, white labeling it, and putting an end-to-end -end solution on top of it. You heard it folks, there's some code for you to use in your own software, I love it. Sorry, Netta, keep going. No problem. So let's start with trying it on a document, trying the layout to extract the text, the table, the selection mark. Let's take a document. And I selected uh, this document, which you will see is in Chinese, in Japanese. I cannot read it, but let's run layout on it and see what it extracts. So this document has both English and Japanese on it, and you do not need to specify the language. And when we click the run layout, we're calling the analyze layout API in form recognizer and sending in the document. You can see that everything that is highlighted is the text that is extracted. You can also see here uh, the checkboxes that are uh, extracted. And if we go to the next pages, because this is a multi-page document, you can see that it also extracts the table. So you can see that it extracts both the Japanese and the English, all the values in the table, all the selection marks in the table, and all the data, including the table structure. So that's bananas. Like I'm looking at this before you go, like you just literally just uploaded this and ran it. Or did you do anything else before to prep it? Or is this just the natural? Not at all. You, I just called the Analyze Layout API and send it this document to analyze. No that's training, cool. nothing, no prepping. It identifies the language, the selection mark, the tables, the handwritten that you can see here, and all the text that extracted into a structured information that you can use um, in your workflows. That's really cool. I, I'm sorry, I, I keep interrupting only because this is really cool. And you, you've kind of worked on this for so long that you just, you don't see, maybe you do, but it's pretty impressive, the stuff that it does. Totally. This is behind it. There's deep learning uh, machines, learnings uh, for the table extraction, for the text. There's our high, uh, our OCR, which is a deep learning OCR that can extract all these languages with high accuracy, both for printed and handwritten. And feel free to ask questions anytime, of course. Yeah, yes. Uh, and I, again, I, you know I will. Uh, so what, what else What else are we going to show us? I interrupted you midstream. No problem. Let me show you how. So when we send the document to the layout analyze, uh, it, you can see it on the screen what it does. But let's see the output that you get from the API, the JSON output. So the JSON output includes for layout two parts. The read results, which has all the text information in it, the page, the angle, the height of the page. 
It has for every line the bounding box, the text, and you can see the, the, the language character, the Japanese characters, the confidence for it, and also the style for it. So for this case, for example, it identifies if it's printed or handwritten. So this character, this line was printed, so it says other. Let's find here also the handwritten in the document. So you can see that Johnny McKinnon was a signature and it was also handwritten and the bounding box for it and the indication that this was handwritten. This is very useful if you have documents with scribbles on them and stuff like that when you want to identify that somebody had had handwritten on it and you want to move it maybe for human validation or understand that this is handwritten versus printed. So just to pause right there because I think like you say it like all nonchalant, if you write it with your own hand with a pen, it will still pick it up. And that it is will correct. That's really cool. That's really cool. Sorry, I just had to jump in there because, look, I, I'm a computer vision kind of guy. And the stuff that, I mean, I went to school like 10 years ago for this stuff. And this stuff was not all the way possible. So it's really cool to see it. Totally, yes. This is this is very awesome that it extracts all the languages, the handwritten, tells you that it's handwritten. So note it extracts all the information from the document to enable you to um, put it in your workflow and make decisions based on this data, on this structure data. So awesome. in, addition, in addition to the read results within the document, which has all the text, uh, the appearance, the bounding box, and information on the text, there's also the page results as part of layout, which extract the tables. So you can see that it finds the tables, tells you the rows, the columns, how many, um, if there's row span, so if there's merge sales or merge columns, it will tell you all the whole structure of the table. And it also refers you to the read results to get the confidence for that text. In addition, let's find the selection marks. So we also extracted the selection marks. So you can see that it also extracts the selection marks, tell you their bounding box and their state, if they're selected or unselected. So you can see that layout now returns all the information from your document, the, the text, the handwritten, um, the selection marks, the tables. And it also enables you to extract the data. So if we go back to this document, and let's go to the last page of the document, you can see the document has two columns here. It will also extract the data in read order, where it will tell you this is the well, the data will be extracted this column first and then this column, so that you can take this data later and do also language understanding and processing on it. Uh, before we used to extract by order, basic order, which is also available from top to bottom and left to right. Now we added also the ability to extract based on reading order for the first column and then the second column. So you can do language understanding on top of the text that is extracted and also have the text like, like a human is reading it in the re right reading order. That's really cool. And I think I you said selection like two because this feature is is it's it's looking at the columns natively. And then the one before was selection. What do you mean by selection? Box? Oh, selection, selection mark. You see the little selection marks here? Oh. So this one is selected and this one is unselected. Oh, I see. Let me zoom in so you can see them here. See this selected? So now when you analyze this document, you see it's a, it, more, it, it, it picks up this is selected and this is not selected. I get it. So like the little check boxes, because I, I don't know, when I go to the doctor, right, there's always a medical form here or there where I have to like check, you know, if I did a thing or I don't have a thing, right? And it will pick those up and be able to give you that information as well. Exactly. And selection mark can look like this. They can be circles that are filled in. There can be just a scribble on top of them. Form recognizer layout will extract all that information to enable you to know what was in the document. That's cool. So you, you talked about this, you talked about the columns, any other things that you wanted to show us? Yes, let's go back to that. We were saying layout. Let's go back to our pre-built models. Form Recognizer has four pre-built models, uh, receipts, business cards, invoices, and we also added IDs. But let's start with the invoices. The invoices enable you to just take an invoice. Um, let's take this invoice, for example. Same thing, you send the invoice to the new uh, invoice analyze invoices pre-built model and you run analyze, anal, analyze on it. This will extract all the key value pairs, so 26 key value pairs, and also the line items. Now, we added the ability to extract line items. So you can see that it extracts the amount due, the billing address, the customer address, the, the merchant, and now it also extracts these line items. Let's see them. So you can see that now it extracts also the date, the product code, the description, the unit price, the quantity, the tax, and the amount. And note, 
that uh, when we extract now line items, the labels for the nine items will always be the same, regardless how they appear on the invoices, because invoices come from a variety of ve vendors. Each one looks very different. Uh, the structure of the output will always be the same, so you can feed it into your ERP system or your purchasing order system or any other system without uh, the need to find figure out which uh, line items belongs to which uh, label in your system. Holy cow! Like I, I did not know this because these are these are what are the, considered the pre-trained forms that are on there. And you're saying that irrespective of the form, it will figure out a unified way to report the line items. Is that is that what you're saying? That is totally correct. So let, we saw this one. Let me show you one that it looks totally different. Let's take this one. And now you can see this one is totally different invoice, different line items, different table structure, different everything. And when you run on analyze, you again will get all the, the, the 26 field, whatever it finds on the document, and then also the line items. That's well, really cool. Yes. Yeah, so here, look, we, we now we can select the line items here. And we got again the description, the unit price, the quantity, the unit itself, and the amount. That's really cool. Thank you. And note that also all, all the result will also always be the JSON results you saw before with the read result, the page results, and also now the document results, which have the key value pairs and the line items information. So you always get all the text, all the automatically detected tables in the document, but now also the key value pairs and the line items from the document. That's really impressive. Like I said, I this is one of the the cases of AI being super useful because we do a lot of transactions over paper. We do a lot of transactions with PDF kinds of forms. This is really useful. Any other things you wanna you wanna show us? Yes, of course. We also added an ID model. So let's select an ID now, which supports passports and U U.S. driver license. So let's start with the U.S. driver license. Same thing. We call the um, this time we call, if you know, see here, the uh, API path, we call pre-built ID docu documents and run analysis, analyze sending it this uh, document. And you can take IDs, the, this one is a nicely uh, picture, but you can take it from photos, you can take it, uh, scan them, send them in any way you want. And you can see that by automatically it extracts the address, the country, the date of birth, the date of expiration, the document number, the first name, the last name, the region and the sex. And again, you'll get a JSON output with all the information. It also supports worldwide passports. So you can also take a passport, send it to run analysis of the IDs, and it will extract all the information from the passport, the MRZ, which is common on passports. And then within the MRZ, the country, the date of birth, um, the date of expiration, the document number, the first name, the last name, and the information that is relevant from a passport. It supports worldwide passports, so any language of passports um, and USI driver license. Uh, this is cool. Uh, and I could see to tons of, of good uses uh, for this where people just want to have like the identification, like when you go to a doctor's office, for example, and they need to know, is it really you? And they literally, you can just, they can scan it and the computer be like, yep, that's them. Uh, this is really cool. And is this a new model that's that's come out recently? This is a new pre-built model that just came out. Um, and we've seen customers using it, especially these days when you want social distancing and you don't want to give your driver license to somebody, stuff like that. You have an app, you, you um, take a photo of your driver license or your ID and basically extract the information that feeds into the doctor's office information or any other know your customer information. This is so cool. This, this is a lot of new stuff. So we talked about the receipt model that was that was been there for a while. This is a new model for identification. Any other things? Yeah, no, we talked about the invoice model, which is also a new model. Oh, it is a new yeah. model. Yes, we have an invoice, which is for invoices. Um, and we have a receipt, which is for the US sales receipt, the long receipt that you receive, and US, US India English receipts that you receive, uh, the one that you receive from stores, from uh, credit slips, from restaurants. That's the receipt model. So Got the it. invoice one is for invoices. And it's a new right. one model with a line items too. I see. So that is new because I was thinking receipts. Uh, receipts on that, but invoice is a new model. All right, this is really cool. Uh, any other things? I keep I keep saying, is there any other thing thing in there can't be? But is There's, there? Yes, there is. There is tons of new things in this oh release. Oh my goodness, I'm so excited! One more thing that I'll show you is Inform Recognize also includes a custom where you can train your model. You can train a model for your documents. 
where you could until now label key value pairs and let's say I could label address, I could label invoice for, I could label vendor. We added the ability to also label tables. So in addition to the tables that are automatically extracted, let's say this table was automatically extracted by layout, which we saw before, we can now label different semantic tables. So for example, let's say if I want to label this table and just say invoice number, or let's give the table name table one, I can label a table as a fixed size this, that I know that it has only one row or as dynamic, where some of my documents has two rows, three rows, or four rows. I can also label a dynamic table. I la label the table, I can give it the column name. So let's say invoice one, add another column, um, charges, and another column total, for example. And let's do row one and say, now I can go and label the table. So I can assign fields to each one. So I can assign this to this to here. I can assign the charges to here. And I can assign the total. Let's assume this was total to here. Um, and I can label like that tables, semantic tables. So for example, if a document has several patients on the same on the same page, you can label this as patient one, patient two, patient three. Um, and label the information to be outputted as a semantic table, regardless if they appear as a table or not on the document. And that's really cool because before I didn't I didn't know that there was table labeling available. But the cool thing is that you can actually before you even because remember you got the specific output in the JSON, but now you can create specific output for tables to match whatever your internal systems can be so that form recognizer responds with something that you're familiar with. Is this what this is for? That is correct. This is for two things. One, um, if we miss, so if for example, your table is not, it wasn't extracted automatically by layout and you still want to get it, then you can train a custom model to uh, to in, to find your table. So uh, if, you have, if the table wasn't extracted automatically, you can label it. You can also label parts parts of a document that don't look like a table, but you want to output them as a table because they're repeated uh, information within the document. So, for example, EOB statement usually um, explanation of benefits statement usually have uh, this part is patient one, this part is patient two, and this part is patient three. And you would want to label this as patient name one, patient name two, patient name three, and the information relevant to them um, for each one of them. And also, if you want to take these row these information and put it in a structure that you want. That's cool. That's cool. So this is a new feature, being able to uh, label tables. Yes, you can label them. Then you need to go and train. And then you can analyze and extract the information to try it out. I see. So for the, for, for clarity, the, the models that we saw before, there's a bunch of pre-built models. But now there's also the ability to train your own models based upon the forms that you may have and the way that you want to extract data. Am I getting this right? That is correct. So cool. Form Recognize has the three parts. One is the layout that just extract the text, all the information, the table, the selection mark, all the information from your documents. Then we have the pre-built, like the invoices that we just saw that there is no training required. You just send the documents and we extract all the information for invoices, IDs, pre-built uh, business cards and receipts. And then we have the custom that enables you to train a model that is specific for your forms to get the data you are interested out of your documents. I see, that's cool. All right, so uh, any other new things that like, I don't even know when to stop asking. There's so many new things. I think that there is more, there is more new things that you can see in the what's new, but I think for demoing and stuff like that, these are like the, the top great features that said the language expansion, the tables, the invoices, um, the IDs are the top features that you know we can talk about and demo. That's cool. Uh, but I mean, there's so many new things and I know you, you have a short amount of time. I don't respect that. Where can people go unless there's something else you want to show? Where can people go to find out more? Yeah, you can go to our docs uh, to the what's new in our docs uh, to find out more. And you can go to this URL to try it out and play with it with your documents, try the invoices, try the IDs, train a model for your documents. Uh, you can do all that in this tool or everything is available as a REST API. So Form Recognizer is a service, an Azure AI service in cognitive services, and everything is available as a simple REST API call and as an SDK in all the languages that you can easily develop with. Well, Netta, as always, it's a pleasure hanging out with you. It's a pleasure learning from you. We've been learning all about what's new 
inside of form recognizer i'm impressed make sure you check it out 